Hello folks, fellow YouTubers and friends. It's me again, trying something new. Uh, my dad was a bootlegger many, many years ago. Ran 150 gallons still. Ran off two batches of wheat. That's 300 gallons of hooch a week. He did that for about six or eight years until so revenue or damn near caught up with him. And uh, he decided to get getting too close for comfort. So he locked off one last batch for himself at 120 proof and uh, shut everything down. Anyway, because he didn't want me to get in trouble, he never taught me how to do it. And uh, my understanding is that you can make uh, alcohol out of sugar or starch. And all grains are starch, such as corn, which corn whiskey is starch. And uh, for some reason, I keep watching people cooking it and putting this uh, amylase, uh, amylase uh, enzyme in it as they cook it and they cook it at a, uh, anywhere from 150 to 180 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour and put the amylase uh, enzyme in it and it supposedly converts all of the uh, starches to sugar however I've never seen anybody cook up cornmeal and uh, or wheat or barley or any any kind of uh, grain and not put sugar in it. Why? I mean, why are they cooking it, turning the starch into sugar, and then turn around and put sugar in it? I don't understand that. If somebody out there knows why, let me know. But these are day-old donuts dug out of the dumpster. You can see the flies gathering around them. I'm not going to be making uh, alcohol to drink. I'm just going to see if, if these donuts will make alcohol. And uh, so we got a 12-quart pot here, five pounds of uh, day-old donuts, and uh, we have our trusty little old turkey cooker over here hooked up to the propane bottle and let me show you a few of the other little items that I've uh, bought to uh, try to see if I can do this or not uh, item number one of course is the amylase amylase a m y l a s e enzyme okay supposedly you put a half a teaspoon per five gallons uh, I saw a guy using it uh, Two good, a couple of days ago on YouTube, and uh, <clears throat> he put in a lot more than a half te teaspoon per uh, five gallons. He put in like four or five teaspoons, but there again, this little bottle is only, I think it's less than $5, I'm not sure, and uh, there's at least 15 or 20 teaspoons in there, double teaspoons. Then I've got uh, this uh, L-A-L-V-I-N, uh, champagne yeast okay that's supposed to produce more alcohol percentage of alcohol than most other yeast yeast uh, from, from what I've read bre regular brewers yeast produces about uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 percent and then the alcohol gets so strong it kills it and the uh, champagne yeast supposedly will go up to 17 or 19 percent alcohol then we bought these uh, two uh, Ooh, hell, what do you call them? Oh. Anyway, the thing that floats in the water. And uh, it tells you, this one uh, tells you your percentage of alcohol and your proof of alcohol. Okay? And the other one, it measures your percentage of uh, sugar. Uh oh came apart oh hell it broke all right I'll have to buy another one this one was only uh, $7.99 so I'll have to buy another one of these but I was going to use it to measure my uh, percentage of sugar damn it I hate that broke oh well we get another one all right and next I bought a thermometer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of styrofoam and put it on it so it can float around in the water. I mean, at 180 degrees, you're not going to melt the styrofoam. So if I put that, then I can just set it, set it in the, uh, the brew and uh, cook it up and watch my temperature. And I've got it. Now, like I said, uh, people have been cooking it anywhere from 150 to uh, 180 degrees. So I'm setting in mine on, at 160. And that way I can just put it in there. And 160 is not going to boil, so it's not going to be bouncing all around the place. So anyway, and then, well, you're supposed to keep it at room temperature. So what I did is I went to Walmart and bought this nifty little device. It's a submersible uh, aquarium heater. Now, this supposedly 
will keep a 10 to 30 gallon aquarium at 78 plus or minus 2 degrees temperature. And from everything I've read and seen, that's just about perfect for uh, your mash to uh, ferment, okay? And uh, seeing as how it will uh, do up to 30 gallon tank, and we're talking glass sides all the way around, I'm thinking if somebody really wanted to, this thing would work great in a 55 uh, gallon drum full of mash. And just all you need to do is just insulate the drum with a little bit of insulation, just wraps all around it, and uh, it would it do it a magnificent job. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to turn the camera off, <clears throat> film a pot about three quarters of the way full of water, and uh, go ahead and put it on the fire and get her cooking. When she starts getting up to about the temperature, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay. Okay, folks, she's running about 120 degrees right now. Put a thermometer in there and held it until it stopped rising. There she is. Hope y'all can see that. 120. Oh, about 122. Maybe 125. Shows she's getting up there. Uh, we had a lid on it to make it heat up faster. Now, what we've got here is my uh, Dewalt half-inch industrial drill and a one-gallon paint mixer. I've got a five-gallon mixer over there, but uh, I put too much water in it. So it works better if you put a little bit of water and use the bigger mixer. That cuts it down quicker. And then heat it up and you use the one-gallon this way, and uh, if it's hot, the donuts break up a lot better. Okay, folks, it's about uh, 20 minutes later now, and she finally, she's up to about 180 degrees I'm, and holding, but uh, I think I'm going to have to leave the lid off, because if with the lid off, it'll come up to about 165, 170, and with the lid on it, it contains the heat, so I've got my Amelie's uh, enzyme here, I'm going to sprinkle it over the top. Okay, and that's a little bit more than it calls for, but I'm going to add a little bit more even because I did see that other fellow do it. Then we're going to mix her up really good and uh, let her cook for another hour. It's uh, right now about uh, 10 minutes to 6 p.m. So uh, come back at 10 minutes to 7 and see what happens. Got rid of both of the, uh, the large pieces. There's a couple of small ones about like that. Uh, still yet. But, uh, I think they'll break down as they cook. I hope. If not, we'll turn it out. Back later and see what happens. 
Well, there it is, folks. Let it cook for about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes, and uh, all the lumps are gone. It's really smooth, and uh, oh my god, it's real smooth, real runny, not thick like it was. That means the sugar doing real good, real good. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to cover it and uh, let it set to, on its own, cools down to room temperature, therefore it'll cook a little bit more under its own heat. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. So uh, when it cools all the way down, I've got some five gallon paint uh, strainers. We're going to put it in a five gallon bucket, pour it in it, and strain all the, in the trash out of it. And uh, then we're going to take a lid, cut a hole in it for the uh, aquarium heater and another hole for the uh, water trap and so that way we can tell when it's bubbling and when it quits bubbling. Okay? And, okay, we'll see you later, probably tomorrow. Have a good evening.